Hello, social media world. You know, Facebook, Instagram, oh, maybe not Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Don't forget This Old House, Daily Motion. Welcome to all of you. I'm Richard Trithuri from This Old House. We are here in Westwood, Massachusetts. This is a training center that we use to teach contractors, engineers, and distributors about HVAC stuff. And that's really what we're talking about today. This is a pro to pro. Uh, we did our first pro to pro about two, three weeks ago talking about plumbing, uh, and this one's about HVAC. Uh, you know, so if you're, it's really, we're designing this to go out to do outreach to the contractor base. We know the contractors watch this house most of the time just to catch us doing something wrong. But they also learn something, and we know that it's a way that they know that their customers are learning about new technology that we keep showing. So, uh, so we'd really like to make our connection deeper with the contractor base. So this is a, the beginning of a new program really designed for contractors. So if you're a homeowner, you can stay. If you want to stay, enjoy, stay with us, that's great. If you're a contractor, thank you for being here. And today our subject for the next 30 minutes is about uh, HVAC. And what better to talk about HVAC than with professional HVAC contractors. Gentlemen, Randy Boutte is a, a local Boston-based uh, contractor who now works with HomeServe. Correct. Thank you. And Jeff Covington is Clean Air Technologies from sort of Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> yes, so, sort of Richmond, so, Virginia. <laughs> thank you guys for taking some time just to sit with us. You know, this is, this is our chance to sort of, what do we know about the state of our industry right now? What's, what's the news? What do you find every day? Okay, yeah, so, yeah. so tell us a little bit about your company. What, you want to go? Yeah, I'll yeah. go. So I work for HomeServe. Um, we, we primarily are based in, in uh, providing service plans, warranties for your whole house, whether it be plumbing, electrical, exterior, heating, air conditioning, you know, pretty right. much cover all the bases. And uh, I work primarily for HomeServe, so I actually am a technician that right. goes in and right. takes care of customers' problems. So you've been an uh, independent contractor and then joined them? Recently. Yeah, yeah. I worked for another company for 15 years, graduated from uh, technical high school. Yeah. And I've uh, been doing it almost 20 years. Jeff, you've got your own company? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Clean Air Technologies. I've uh, been in the industry for about 24 years, uh, primarily heating and air conditioning. Um, Clean Air Technologies has been around for five years. Um, so we do, you know, from your basic installation to uh, troubleshooting, service, uh, maintenance programs. Um, and then we've partnered with HomeServe uh, to help take care of our customers in our area. And you, that, that made you move into plumbing too, right? Yeah, so HomeServe, uh, you know, it's been a wonderful partnership and they have actually uh, helped us form our plumbing division uh, to get that started. All right. So there's a bunch of stuff here and I thought we could just take a little tour and sort of go through it. Just as we go by each thing, you know, what do you know, what do you learn, what do you like, what do you not like, you know, just give the world your your two cents on it and anything anecdotally, any any fun stories Absolutely. you've ever had, okay? Yeah, sure. So, uh, starting over here, up here in New England, we've got tight little houses, you know, with might have had radiators, so we use a fair amount of this. This is this is small duct high velocity. This is a brand called Unico. You can have a slotted outlet or a round outlet like this, and for us, it's been an unbelievable solution. Do you guys use it anywhere? You're down in Virginia. So we see it very little in Virginia, but. Um you know, we have mainly traditional heat pump systems. Yeah, you got plenty of space in big attics and Yeah, basins. so over the past 24 years I've been in the industry, I've seen four or five of these systems. Yeah. But uh, I think the design was great, uh, especially for the retrofit application. Right. You know, you get smaller ducts yeah. to fit in tighter spaces. The key to it is to have the right number of outlets for the room. It doesn't matter where they are, they just can't blow on people, you know. So. And you've seen them around. Oh, you've, been around New, you've been around New England plenty. Definitely see them. They're great right. because you can, you can get those ducts in those tight areas, right. you know. So... You still you have a bunch of the regular conventional heat pumps down in down in Virginia, right? Yes. So you got some of this high high efficiency inverter style coming. So yeah, the uh, the high efficiency, the inverter style, the ductless, ducted, yeah. all the mini split applications yeah. Yeah. are are becoming very popular in our area. It's pretty amazing the efficiency because in the old days the heat pumps often couldn't keep up once it got to what 35 degrees and then you had an electric backup. Yeah, so with the new inverter technology that are coming out uh, on these hyperheat models, you know, you get 100% uh, efficiency and capacity at that's, zero degree that's right. outdoor temperature. So uh, up here, we, we, we don't have as much ducted as you do. We got a fair amount of hydronic, you know, yeah, the, the, you yeah. know radiant and uh, uh, radiators and still, but uh, we still, um, and we're going to talk about efficiency a little bit. 
This is what sort of changed the world, right? I mean, the high, the high sidewall cassettes. Yep, yep. It was great because you didn't have to worry about running the ductwork, especially right. these old houses up right. here in New England. Right. The old steam system. That's right. You couldn't run ductwork. So for that raised cape, you could put one of these up at the end of the gable, yep. right? Yep. Run, run it on the outside with that exposed yep. duct stuff. Yeah, it was yeah. great. It made it a lot easier to cool right. home. So now there's all kinds of choices. You know, this is what we had originally 25, 30 years ago when we first had Mitsubishi first came, and now LG's here, Fujitsu, Panasonic. It was sort of limited. Now we got floor-mounted units. We've got ducted, right? And th some of these things are so cool. This is that high sidewall that doesn't, you know, if you've got a, a dark room, why put a nice big white thing in the middle of it? So this is a mirror, so it takes on the, uh, the, the shape of the room. Have you seen that? Oh, yeah. These are great. I, I actually installed one. You know, it was, hard, it was a hard sell, but um, I loved it. And you know, what, what this it, is, for know. people that don't know, this is the, the heating and cooling unit for the room. Okay, it tips forward when it comes on. These two fins come open here, and it sends heating and cooling here. And you can change the picture to have whatever you want there. So you could. I, I wish it would be a TV too. I wish it would be a TV. <laughs> yeah, there's a market. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, uh, and this is really changing everything. So you've, we've got up here. We've got oil and gas furnaces, fewer heat pumps, uh, and so you can pull out that oil or gas furnace, put this in one set of lines to outside, and now they've got enough power to give you that heating and cooling 100%, as you mentioned, on the coldest day. So. Yeah, with all the efficiency that you possibly need. Yeah. Speaking of efficiency, you, you got who's, who enforces efficiencies where you are? You know, is the local building inspector, or is there, what are the codes like? There's really no uh, efficiency enforcement in you our rat. area. You uh, <laughs> we got all the efficiency. Yeah, so codes. the only enforcement that we would see is, you know, with the government coming into play and, yeah. and dictating, so the yeah. 14s here now is your minimum standard. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, in our area, we don't see any How about ductwork? work? Does anybody check that it gets sealed or, or insulated? So in a few localities in our area, um, if we go to file for a permit for a new installation, uh, they will want to see a manual J and manual D yeah. um, to be able to issue the permit. To, to prevent oversizing, which is the curse of our industry. Yeah. yeah. Everybody wants to oversize. Yeah, you got <laughs> to so, make sure it's sized so. properly. Uh, do you have any zoning? We do. Yeah. We do. I, I love zoning. Yeah. Um, we, we sell and install a lot of these. Um, I think it's a, a great application. This is a pretty cool system that we like. This has a telephone jack here, so you can put these in. And then you can daisy chain one to another, and you can actually change the grouping later on. So it means, and they have some retrofit options, which are unbelievable. I love this thing. Instead of having a bypass damper, you know, that dump tar, zone, yeah. you dump zone. Yeah. This thing, you stick this in the supply plant, I mean, it feels the pressure and opens the, so you don't need a bypass, which is totally cool. So that will just slightly open maybe another zone or yeah. two to yeah, compensate just bleed just for enough. That. So it really, it's, it's really nice because. You just don't even know what the, and you don't, often don't have enough room for a bypass, mm -hmm. you know. So, so up here we are, we're making our houses tighter and tighter. The, the local restrictions is to you got to insulate. We everybody's using isonine foam, and yeah. you know, we, so we got to think about fresh air. And so the rule is really you can't insulate without ventilating. So this is starting to become almost the baseline. And I know in Minnesota and Wisconsin, I think it's a code now that you have to have mechanical ventilation in any house, in any building. So. This is the basics of an energy recovery ventilator. There's no drain pan. So what we do is try to teach here, like on the show. So if you're talking about seeing this thing in the winter, you got heated air that's coming from the building, and it's going to pass to outside. You've got cold air coming in here, but you don't want that cold air coming in. You want to keep that heated air here. So what this does is it exchanges through this core, so you end up with a fair amount of the heated air and then uh, a little bit of the, and just the opposite happens over here. So this is a hard concept. You know, we've been trying to tell it for a little bit. I got to show you. This year we did, <laughs> we did, we tried to do a, a technical story. And the way it worked, so the way it worked was, let me just run this tape and you'll see it. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to say, let's do, the director says, let's do smoke sticks. And they didn't show up until that morning, and we didn't really check the wind <laughs> condition. So this is our cameraman slowly being fucked. Fu <laughs> so here's our here's our cameraman, and he still is not right. He's <laughs> so this is it doesn't always go as smooth on television as you'd think. 
Yeah. So, no but, test run on this, <laughs> no huh? test run. So the, the finished one we did, but nobody's ever seen this. Nobody's ever seen this except for you guys so and now the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> so we just pulled it out. So it doesn't always go perfectly, but for us trying to tell a technical story, you know, most people, they know that there's a thermostat on the wall connected to something. Yeah. They don't know what the hell it is, so what the heck it is. <laughs> Sorry, can you do this on social media? <laughs> so, all right. So please send your questions in. We will take, take any and all questions in the time we have got about... The total is about a half an hour. We hope we can get as many in as we can. Uh, we've got, um, let's just see. Here's, here's one uh, from Orlando Kyle at CRG Services. Thank you for checking in. Every one of our customers' kids seems to have an allergy. I worry about getting sued if I do air quality improvements. I mean, you're the, you're the uh, god of air definitely quality. Definitely one for you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, with our company, we have a strong emphasis on indoor air quality. Um, I would say in regards to being concerned about getting sued, just make sure you're covering your bases and you know what you're talking about. Um, what do you use? So what do you use for equipment? What, what, what technology? <clears throat> we do actual indoor air quality testing um, to where we can take air samples and surface samples. Um, we have a local company um, from what I understand, there's some all over the nation that you can send these off to. They'll right. mail you back the results so you can sit down with the homeowner and, and show them facts of, you know, if there's an issue, what it is. You can dive into it, see what the problem is, and then present a solution there. Yeah. Um, that way you're covering all your bases. Um, you know, you don't want to start going around dropping the mold word to right. people unless we know that it truly right. is. So you test it to be sure it's, it's an issue if it is an issue. Correct. Yeah. As far and as maintenance, that, there's a big emphasis on maintenance on those as well, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So in the HVAC industry, uh, you know, maintenance programs are, are extremely important. Um, so if we're in a, in a homeowner's house and we're performing a, a maintenance, if we see anything that might raise any kind of concerns, we can have it tested and make sure that, uh, you know, the homeowners yeah. they have good, good air quality in their homes. Yeah. Let's just review the choices. I mean, for air quality, for us, it was always just the basic filter, and then you went to a MERV filter. What are you doing now? Are you doing ozone, or are you doing UV, or...? So we stay away from ozone uh, depleting products. Yes. Um, one of the yeah. newer... Uh, better products that I've seen is called the Abco unit. Um, it uses a carbon technology. Uh, this specific unit will fight against the common cold, influenza, E. coli. Um, it also it looks something like this thing? It looks familiar yeah. to this unit right Why here. Why don't you pull it over here? Um, <clears throat> so, but through the carbon technology, this will also electrostatically charge dust particles. So when we first install a unit in a, in a customer's yeah. home, we're going to let them know that in the first couple of weeks, you're going to see actually more dust. Mm -hmm. It's not creating more yeah. dust. It's actually it's making it, it clump yeah. together. So you're going to filter it better through your, your filtration system. So let me just stop you one second. Please send your notes and, and questions in to us, please. Join, join the conversation. We're glad to have you. Um, we got two pros and me. Yeah, <laughs> so, come on. Bring them on. Bring them on. <laughs> All right. So, so that's an interesting, pretty simple installation, and what's the life expectancy? <clears throat> so the cells are generally two years, much like a UV light. Okay. Um, so generally about every two years, and then the great thing about this product is, uh, you know, we don't sell it to a homeowner, install it, and then just walk away. This will actually generate more revenue, you know, over the future. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, they're great to couple with maintenance programs, so we can make sure we're changing the cells. Great. great. I got uh, Shelly on Facebook uh, sends in, will an HRV or an ERV lower humidity? And so that's, that's an ERV right there. And so two principles that happen inside these devices is heat goes to cold and high humidity goes to low humidity. So think about the condition in the winter here in New England, yeah. right? It's going to be warm, dry air that air is dried out like crazy you got a chance of a little more humidity in the cold air, so you'll get some humidity into the building in the winter, which is what you want. And in the summer, it's just the opposite. You've got dry, cool air, and the warm, moist air from outside will keep that humidity outside to the greatest level. So, yes, it'll lower the humidity when it's supposed to, and it'll raise the humidity when it's supposed There's to. There's no so real way of knowing how yeah, much, right, but, right. yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you, Shelley. Please please uh, send in uh, his one. Thank you. This is this is a cool response here. 
well, you like us. You really like us. <laughs> so, so, so from Alan, uh, Central Climate, Lancaster, PA. Thermostats keep getting smarter, but I lose time and money on them. They drive me crazy. There's too many of them, too many different brands for me to learn. Who's the thermostat king here? What do you say about thermostats in this day and age? Thermostats try and find something, you know, it really comes down to the customer. You know, you, you have to kind of feel out the customer for what they're looking for. Because in the end, they're the ones dealing with it every day. Uh, as far as simplicity, though, you know, the, there's so many out there, correct. But we've been using the uh, Honeywell T4. Okay. And you can do a lot with it. You can program it. You can set it so that there's no program. You can have it do heat cool. You can have it do heat only. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got a nice old lady who lives in Revere who just has heat. An older she's, woman. You yeah, can't yeah, say old lady. Old lady, lady sorry. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. We're contractors. Yeah. We can say that. <laughs> we can say that. You know, it, it, it's very simple for her to use uh, versus like a nest. You yeah. know, it really, I, I think you have to feel out the customer for it. You might not want to, you know, have so many different types of thermostats. That the Honeywell T4 is probably best. What percentage of the Honeywell chronotherms that you've seen on the wall were ever programmed? None of them. <laughs> yeah, those little, those little like set yeah. pens there. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Well, so, if you think about, you know, in this day and age, you have a lot more people that are more tech savvy. Yeah. Um, so we're getting a big mix of, you know, people that want things simple, but people that really want this thermostat that yeah. can basically send a vacuum to clean your house while right. it controls your temperature. <laughs> yeah. Any um, under, anybody under 35 is way tech smarter than... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it does make it difficult in our industry, yeah. you know, when you walk into somebody's house, you just really don't know what type of thermostat you're going to have to yeah. look at. So from Carter on the uh, on the This Oz website, uh, how about some thoughts on heat pump units? So I'll tell you this, uh, this year on Jamestown, we, our director said, you know, um, can you explain a heat pump to America in a basic way. Mm. And it turned out to be the hardest thing I've ever done <laughs> yeah, in my yeah. life. So what I did is I really took about a month and I got a little video that shows some of it. Um, so hold on one second. So so I'm going to put up the uh, deconstructed the heat pump now. So you know here, here it is playing here. So I was, needed to explain it to what I call the third grade. So we, we got the, all the basic components and we showed a reversing valve and an expansion valve and all the different parts and then we showed how it's different on there and it was it was impossibly hard to tell it in but it came out great you know because every time I see a YouTube video on refrigeration there's some HVAC guy talking down to me mm. you know saying well it's saturated heat and expansion change of state you know yeah. so it, nobody's actually Nobody's actually explained just the basics of what make what makes this refrigeration cycle, which is the heart of our business, yeah. happen mm -hmm. every single day. So it was one of the hardest things I ever did. Yeah. So having said that, Carter, your question about heat pumps, let's talk about it. What uh, you know, these new inverter heat pumps are efficient. Like for us, it's changed everything in the cold weather climate. You know, we get we get down to minus five. You know, zero is our design condition, but you know, we we got a plan for maybe minus five. These things, these things can give us enough heat, even on a zero degree day, which is just unheard. which is crazy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, one of the things that really kind of threw me that that I, I tried to grasp the concept of is, of course, you know, we got introduced to variable speed blower motors. Yeah. Now we're looking at more of a variable speed compressor. Right. You know, I mean, so going from, um, you know, your older style compressors to the scroll compressors right. and understanding that, right. and now you're looking at basically a variable speed compressor right. as well which is, is fantastic and a lot of this inverter technology by you know either slowing down airflow right or slowing down you know the flow of refrigerant is what allows You're design it to really matching build everything up that heat. right right that's what I tried to get across in that piece because I showed that the compressor has like 1600 speeds and then the expansion valve has 400 different positions yes. you know, and the fans are changing all the time so it's just it's just crazy so what's what it's done is it's changed how you might attack a building. We never, we always would go with boilers and radiators, and, you know, yeah. and hydroware up here. We would never, and now we're just, we've crossed the line, and now it's, we're saying, with comes, you got to keep it out of the snow. You can't let the condenser yeah. be covered yep. in snow, yep. you know, so. One other piece of technology we should talk about, though, is, is this. We just showed it on Jamestown. 
And this regular unit right here, you can either cool the building or you can heat the building. Now there are moments in spring and fall, right, that you got sunny side looking for air conditioning and, and north side looking for a little heating. So what we showed is this. Let me, actually, let me, let me just play this little video right here. This is the, uh, it's called a heat recovery unit. So now, instead of two pipes, there are three pipes between the inside unit and the out the, it, to a distribution box. So now we're going to take heat into the building or take heat out of the building, and that's never that's like commercial VRF, but now it's available yeah. for single phase, 110 volt uh, or 220 volt supply. So it comes in and it comes to a distribution box. So with that, you can be simultaneously heating one side of the building and cooling the other side. Which is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So now you can get heat from the sunny side. Now this is the distribution box right here, and you can have up to 12 different zones. Here's, here's the air handler sending the air out to the ductwork. And the last piece is you can use the refrigeration cycle to heat water, hot water. I mean, right? so there's one, a lot of applications for yeah. you know, something like that. Right. You know, just thinking at, right off the bat, you could have like uh, your mother-in-law living on one side of the house who wants the house at 90 degrees, That's but right. you, could, you could cool your side, right. no problem. Right. You know, that and heat the pool. <laughs> and heat the pool. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or Nana's hot tub. Uh, all right, so let's see what we got left for questions here coming in. Oh my good, look at all the calls, it's super. Um, so this is Finn from the UK, thank you Finn from the UK. Yeah. So the HVAC systems here in the UK haven't kicked off domestically, only commercially. In the States, you use a combi boiler and a radiator for central systems, which are the standard in the UK. And I, I know about the UK. So the, the UK, in, I remember it was in uh, late 90s that the, the, the British government passed a law that said you had the least efficient boiler you could have was a, a condensing boiler. Yeah. So they went from burning peat moss, to, you guys went from here to here, and it meant a million boilers a year got sold in the first year from zero, because everybody was just sort of keeping the same thing taped and patched and taped together. And now you guys are moving like crazy with that wall-hung combi boilers. We see wall-hung combi boilers uh, a fair amount here north of me. You know that you can have in Maine, New Hampshire, yeah. and, and so you know we, we do a lot with combi boilers. You know, we we were stepping in with Navian, and yep. uh, we're doing a little bit with IBC now. Yeah, and Renai's and, got uh, a good one too. Renai's pretty good. Yep. Renai always had that that heat exchanger issue. Oh. You know, from their older equipment, but you know, it, Just it's definitely too many to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is contract to contract. Yeah. <laughs> no lawyers allowed here. <laughs> um, I think they're great units. Yeah. I don't think it's for everybody. Yeah, you know. It, it comes down to reliability yeah. and you know trying to get the parts for them. Right, yeah. It's not for everybody. Yeah. I think you really have to feel the customer out for that one as well. But uh, they're great units. Yeah. They're great. I, I have live one with in my one. house. I live with one in my house. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah. And you can take a shower for 24 hours straight if you choose to. Yeah. You look like a prune, but you can do it. <laughs> so, um, Alex, on YouTube, I have a 30-year-old ducted system in a split-level house that heats unevenly and has no dampers to be found. That was probably because you got them that was perfect right there. <laughs> what are your thoughts on constant airflow regulators that insert into the duct? I don't think I've ever even seen one of those. I'm not sure. Um, the tricky thing about zoning, an existing ducted system, well, first of all, if you don't see any registers, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it has no damp. Oh, no dampers. I'm sorry. No dampers. No, yeah, I'm sorry. no dampers. I'm sorry. So... Um, let me just Is bring this back. Hold on. Must sec. be talking mechanical dampers then, just like manual open. So, this was pretty interesting. This can go down into a register boot. Oh, wow. Okay, and have your grill over the top, and here's your motor, and you can run your cord down inside or poke out through and, and run it exposed. So, so in the tough to get at where you can't have a blade damper, this they also yeah, make this thing in a cut-in blade damper. So. Uh, there is ways to fix this, Alex. The, the challenge is you look at these distribution systems and some of the ductwork is buried in walls and you just, it's you, just, you'd never so you're get toast. You know? I mean, 
unless you can get access to the trunk line, you're not going to really, unless you have one of these, this would yeah. be great. Yeah. But, you know, you're Aren't not going to be able to do that. Aren't you glad you came in there? I am. Very good. <laughs> well, again, with this specific system that, uh, that, that you're showing here, um, again, a system that was installed 30 years ago may be in a tight space and might not have room for the bypass. Sure. So, which is perfect for this yeah. application. Yeah. yeah, particularly if you've got cooling. Freeze that coil. Uh, so, let's see. Uh, everybody, here's Brent from Illinois. Everybody's trying to get me to do ductless mini splits, but I like my good old furnaces. What do you suggest? I'm not sure how to answer that. Um, that's like saying. I mean, if, it, if it's got a ducted system already, you've got to stick with the ducted system. Um, if, if you if you don't have any duct work at all, you have hydronic heat or steam heat, <clears throat> you might be best off with a mini mm, split. Mm. Don't be afraid of it just because <clears throat> the technology is different. You know, just learn more about it yeah. before you start selling yeah. it. And that's probably one of the biggest things in this industry that's difficult to approach is there's a lot of this new equipment coming out, and every manufacturer has their own board, own specific board. So sure. it's not like the old days where right. you could carry just a bunch of universal parts. That's right. You know, so a lot of a couple these, of high uh, limits, and you were out there. Yeah, yeah you're good. Yeah, you know, yeah. a couple of S eighty nine. You were good. Oil nozzles. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. But uh, you know, if you if you're looking into selling, yeah. you know, getting into the market of mini right. splits, don't be afraid to do it. Just right. know your craft. You know? I, you know, everybody's been nervous. My sense is all this technology. Once it gets installed initially correctly, they seem to run and run and run. Yeah. It's really getting it by <laughs> bad it. and with bad voltage or something like that is the thing to get the you. The key of what you said, installed correctly. Yeah, yeah. It's that's got huge. to be installed correctly <laughs> yeah. or you're just going to have a big pile of yeah. junk and stuff and no problem. Let's talk, let's talk about that. How about uh, you've got a growing company right now. How, how, do you, how do you get good help? you had any issues? Everybody, everybody does. <laughs> that's a loaded question. Of course you do. Yeah, so finding good help these days in, in basically any construction industry right now is, is extremely difficult for just about every business owner. Um, you know, so one thing that we have done was, uh, you know, partnered with uh, some colleges that have HVAC programs yeah. um, that will send us uh, their graduates with resumes. Um, so they have the classroom training, you know, we want to get them more of the hands-on training, the customer service training, and, and really mold them and shape them into good technicians. Yeah. Turn them into your kind of guy, people. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's what a lot of, you know, the, the very large companies are doing these days, which of course they can afford to, is they're, a lot of focus is on training. Yeah. Um, these days, right now, it's not as much trying to find the talent as it is the right type of person with the right mentality and then train them right um to to really be able to because guess what i don't industry. think you're going to find anybody trained already that you're going to get no no you, know, you got they're, they're hard to yeah. find because they're right. being well taken care of right. yeah how do you guys stay current how do you how do you stay current with technology how do you keep your people or how do you stay current i, I pretty much rely on the internet Quite honestly, uh, I think that's going to last. That internet. I, I, thing? I think it's going to last. <laughs> but you know, I, I try to stay up to date with any of the new stuff coming out. And if I see something in the field that I've never seen before, I actually make a point to look into it. Yeah. Try to understand what it is that's happening internally. That way, if I come across it again, I have a better understanding. Yeah. And uh, the internet is just—it's it's a powerful tool you know, for our you can industry. Find anything you want. You know. Yeah. And everybody's got a smartphone. Right. Everybody's got a computer right. in their back pocket. Right. <laughs> you know. How did how did you guys get in this industry? I always ask this question. How did what happened? How did you get in the HVAC industry? Uh, my father. What, what wrong turn did you take? <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. <laughs> my, my father was a plumber, and uh, I actually grew up in Framingham, right next to a technical high school. Oh yeah. And I, I went there rather than regular high school, and uh, graduated plumbing class, and kind of just went uh, from co-op. They got me a job, and I worked for that company for 15 years. Yeah. And that's just pretty much how I started. Yeah. You know, I'm 37 years old. I've been doing it almost 20 years. Right. There's a huge, huge difference yeah, there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's good for that age. Thank you. Yeah. I die. I dye my hair. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to admit that on social. <laughs> how about yeah, you? For myself, it was uh, when I was still in high school. You know, I did it in the summertime. Um, earned some cash. And then when I got out of high school, it was, you know, kind of sticking with it until I figured out what it was that I wanted to do. Um, I really enjoyed what I did. I was learning a lot, and I excelled pretty rapidly in the industry. And um, it just every day was something new. Mm -hmm. um, so the level of excitement was there, and uh, 
you know, so I mean, I started out as an installation helper and then, you know, learned yeah, that right, yep. and then went to service yep. and sales and management and yep. just really worked my way up the ladder. Yep. And it was always something new and different. Yeah. What do you like about the industry? I think the, the, the challenge. So on my side with service, and I do installs every once in a while, but uh, I like puzzles. So yeah. every time I go to a job where something's broken and I got to figure out right. you know, what's going on, I love that kind of and stuff. And you know you're going to get the answer somewhere. Oh, yeah, you know I'll it's get there, to like it. You know on a crossword puzzle there's yeah. an answer somewhere. Yeah, I'll get to yeah. it. I'll get yeah. to it. But yeah. that's what I love the most about it. It yeah. keeps my, my brain going, my yeah. mind going, yeah. and, and uh, I love a challenge. Same for you? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I feel it's a very rewarding industry because when, you know, every day you're going to people's houses that, that have problems and we're mm -hmm. there to solve these problems for them. And when we do and, and you get these, these customers and these homeowners that, uh, you know, are just so very happy that, you know, mm -hmm. Randy came out, yeah. dove yeah. into this, he overcame the challenge, he, he fixed it for them and now they don't have to worry about it. And they're just, they're very happy and appreciative. And, you know, that, that really goes a long way yeah. with, with all of us from, you know, business owners to technicians, yeah. installers. Yeah. You know, you made me think about my two sons both went to college and they get out and we, we met and they said, Dad, we want to work with you. I go, why? <laughs> <laughs> and they said, we think this energy field is really fascinating. You know, that this, this whole idea about how we can now continue to be comfortable, make people comfortable, can keep on saving energy is fairly exciting, you know, like, you know, compared to what my great grandfather dealt with, you know, a 50% a efficient boiler and, yeah. and mm -hmm. open cracked windows and stuff like that. <laughs> Let's try to fit a few more uh, questions in here. This is from, from YouTube. I don't have a name on this one. How can you determine what size heat pump or air conditioner to put in? For example, is a two and a half ton per house up to 2,500 square feet, and so on and so forth with a three and a half, three to three and a half ton. So let's just talk about sizing. Who, you, you do a So we do a lot of it. Um, we deal with it on basically a daily basis. Um, a lot of people will use the square foot per ton rule of thumb, um, which can get you close, but it's not the answer. Um, you know, there's a lot of factors that take mm -hmm. into place. What direction is the house facing? How much sun is it going to be yeah. taking in? Um, what is the R value of the windows, the insulation? Right. Is it brick? Is it vinyl siding? Mm -hmm. um, you really have to take all of that into account because uh, if you undersize, of course, it's not going to keep up. Right. If you oversize, it's going to short cycle. Which, which is, is our worst nightmare. Yeah, that's not yeah good. it's going to create a whole another list of right. issues there. So um, you do it manually on paper? Or you're doing a software program. So we have a software program what do you uh, use? called Right Suite. A Right Suite, um, Right Soft. Yeah. Yep. So they're based locally in Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. they are. Yeah, they're a okay. great outfit. Yeah. So um, cool. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a great program. So you know we can do the manual J load calculations, the manual D. Uh, we can do duct draw. Um, yeah. So we can we can size and lay out an entire duct system yeah. and, and show somebody this is what it's going to be. We're seeing some jurisdictions around here that insist on the submission of the heat heat loss heat gain calculation before you can put the equipment in for new <laughs> installs. Right, yeah. and then they're double checking it with a, having to bring in a third party called a HERS rater to double check not only the sizing but the the, the insulation of the ductwork and everything else. And the pressure too. You yeah. guys are doing static yeah. pressure tests yeah. and. You know, the other thing to add to that would be uh, if you're retrofitting an old system, you know, also make sure that your ductwork existing is going to handle air conditioning because you're running at much higher CFM. So if your ductwork's not large enough, you're going to get a lot of sweating yeah. and mm -hmm. <laughs> mold, then you can call, yeah. call Jeff in. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an important question. This is a really important question. From Keo in mass. He's on YouTube. <laughs> you must know Akio? I do. <laughs> so, how do these two pros grow such strong beards? <laughs> so, this must be a contractor. <laughs> he, he works for home, sir. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. Thank you, Keo, for lightening it up for us. Um, Jody on Facebook writes, uh, where did you go? What are your thoughts on geothermal as and why don't we see more of them? Is it cost effective? I think the initial cost is huge yeah. To, yeah. to put one in. I did one in Cambridge with uh, Wellesley Plumbing, and yeah. it was a, a, an, just an astronomical amount of money yeah. to, to do the install. And yeah. the maintenance after it was, was not easy as, as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, you know, we saw a, a huge spike in geothermal installation quite a few years ago when the government was doing all the, the tax credits and everything. And with geothermal, you got a 30% tax credit. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of people were seeing the value there of, okay, well, I'm going to spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand 50000 on the 
geothermal installation, but at the end of the year, I can get a big chunk of mm -hmm. that back. Um, once they, the government did away with the tax credits, yeah. it went right back right. downhill. Mm -hmm. And it's not pretty drilling in granite here in New England. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah. it, it's a slow return <laughs> on your investment. Yeah. So. Um, but it's, I think it's a great application, but again, the upfront cost is, is very huge. extraordinary. Yeah. So if you're not going to be living in your house for more than 30 or 40 years, right. you're not going to get a return on your investment. So let's talk a little bit about HomeServe. I, you know, I, 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 realized, I didn't realize that it's a national company. I mean, it's, a, it's all over the country, right? It's national. It's international. We're in five countries. Okay. It's a big company. And uh, it, it's just continental the U.S. So Alaska and Hawaii back off. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I believe I'm not. And so explain. Sure. I mean, I I don't I didn't really know what it is. What did it make sense for you to do? What, tell, tell it, it's basically we provide a a, uh, a a warranty almost for everything in the house. Uh, for me, I deal strictly with what they call energy services. So it's heating, air conditioning, water heaters. That's why you're here. That's why I'm you're here. You're a pro. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it covers pretty much all the costs for your everyday problems, you know, whether it be a blower motor, blower wheel, inducer, uh, condenser fan blades, contactors, and it also uh, covers the cost of the labor as mm -hmm. well. So you, you pay a premium just like you would any kind of insurance mm -hmm. in a way. And, but uh, for some people it just know, means they don't have the, f the fear and the worry about the big killer expense. Exactly, on that. exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, it also includes, uh, if you go with the Premier plans, it includes maintenance. Yeah. So you, you get your tune-up every year for yeah. your equipment. Good, which the equipment wants. You know, yeah. which is good because you can find a lot of things that could break. Not to yeah. say they would, but yeah. we're not the kind of company yeah. where if, if we think it's going to break, we're not going to replace because we're trying to save the money. No, if we think it's going to break, we're going to replace it. Sure. So you don't, you're not, you're not without. It's in your best interest in theirs. Yeah, so. you know, it, it, it's it's. Uh, it can be fast paced. Yeah. You know, yeah. we do a lot of hours to keep up with our customers, yeah. but uh, you know. Jeff, you were talking great. before that you you joined some years ago and you're growing like crazy, but there was some unintended consequences, right, on the uh, the home serve thing where you'd you'd go in and cover something under warranty, but if there were other <coughs> things that were to take take that for a ride. Yeah. Me. So you know, as a contractor with home serve, um, we signed on with them with as what they call a territory model. Um, which puts us on a flat rate pricing with them so that way we know we can be successful, they know they can as well. Um, so it's a great fit. Um, but you know, if, if we're on a, a service call uh, to repair somebody's heat pump system and we come across maybe a separate issue or something that might not be covered under the plan, as a contractor, we can you know, present this issue to the homeowner and, uh, and, and do it through our, our company. Um, you know, generally we'll call into home serve just to check coverage and make sure they don't have any plan that would cover something like that. Right. Um, so for us as an independent contractor, uh, working with home serve is actually, it's almost like free marketing. Um, right, because you're in the house already doing the, the warranty stuff for them. Exactly. It's pretty cool. Exactly. So it, it works out very well. And I actually, you guys admitted that they pay their bills too. <laughs> that Which is do. good if you're contracting. You know, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> that they do. You know, with uh, home serve being about thirty percent of our business, uh, I'm glad they pay their bills because yeah. they, they they pay well. Good. Well, I got to thank you guys. Thank you. Thirty minutes goes by pretty fast. Doesn't it, it does. It so, does. But you guys are just awesome. So thank you, Randy and Jeff. Thank oh, you, thank to the you, viewers, Thanks for hanging for with us. us for a little bit. If you haven't already, please check out the pro to pro section of the This House.